I want to share some biblical concepts with you that you probably haven't heard in a church before. But stick with me. I think you might be interested in what I have to say. I recently did a video advising Christians that they should keep the biblical Sabbath when and how God asked, and I received this comment. It says, what does it matter? We're not just supposed to worship God on Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday. We're supposed to worship him daily. And I agree to a point. I completely agree that we should make it a daily point to worship God if we are believers, not just on Saturday, the Sabbath, or Sunday, or Monday, or Wednesday, or Friday. But if we say we are worshipers of the God of the Bible, then we need to ask ourselves, what does it mean to worship someone? In my opinion, we worship someone by showing them love. And I want you to think about this. If you really, truly love someone, then they really can't do any wrong in your eyes. Now, you can go pretty far with this concept, but I want you to think about it this way. Think about the love a parent has for their children. Most parents would go to any lengths to protect their children. And that's because they love them more than anything else in the entire world. And some people don't have kids. Some people think about their spouse this way or their parents this way. That's exactly why God is our heavenly father and why Christ is the husband of the church. We are supposed to love them back with that unconditional love that you have as a parent or that you have as a husband towards your wife or vice versa. And when you have that love for somebody, you worship them in the sense that you believe what they're asking you to do is good for you or good for the relationship. Like a father or a mother should never intentionally lead their kids astray. They love them and cherish them and want the best for them. And ideally, a parent would want their kid to feel the same way back about them. I love you so much that I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to respect the rules of your house. Same thing with the husband-wife situation. A man is supposed to protect and take care of his wife. And a wife is supposed to honor and respect and submit to her husband. Knowing that as a man, you would do anything to make sure that your wife is taken care of. And as a wife, you would make sure you do everything in your power to love and respect your husband and show him that you know he's doing that for you. This is the type of love that God has for us. And that's the type of love we're expected to have back for God and his son. And if we really have that love, we are worshiping them. In 1 John 5, it says this, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Why would you think the commandments of your husband or your father or your mother or your wife are burdensome? You wouldn't if you really love them. And Christ, as the husband of the church, says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, the commandments we're supposed to keep are very clearly from the beginning of the book to the end of it. The Torah, the prophets, the words of Jesus. Because contrary to popular doctrine, Jesus didn't give us any commandments that aren't in the beginning of the book. Except for one, but we'll save that for another video. So keeping the commandments in the Torah shows God that we love him. And walking in Jesus' footsteps, taking his lead like he kept the Sabbath, shows Jesus that we love him. So if we truly love God and Jesus, we will do what they asked and how they asked us to do it. And if we aren't worshiping God, we won't obey his commandments. He gives us an entire list all throughout the Bible of things not to do if you say you are worshiping him. Now, this brings me back to my original point with the Sabbath. God said, if you love me, you'll obey me. And his commandment was that we keep the seventh day, the Sabbath, Saturday holy. Does that mean you can't or shouldn't worship God on any other day of the week? Of course not. But if you are worshiping God, you'll make it a special point to keep the day when and how he asked. And how did he ask us to keep the Sabbath? Well, it was actually pretty simple. He said, if you can avoid it, don't work, don't make someone work, like what you do for your job, don't buy and don't sell, because that would obviously make somebody work. Now, of course, there's going to be situations that come up where we can't keep the Sabbath for this reason or that reason. 
God knows that we're human. He knows what we're going through. He knows we're going to make mistakes. But every other time that it's in our power, shouldn't we do it when and how he asked? Shouldn't we have a desire to do it when and how he asked? And we can look to Jesus as our example. Jesus is the ultimate pinnacle of what we should be doing as believers and worshipers of God. And in Luke 4, we see that it was Jesus's custom to keep the Sabbath day and go to the synagogue. So we see that Jesus kept the Sabbath when and how God asked. And he made it a holy, set-apart, special day to his Father, the Most High. And he's our example, so this is obviously what we should be doing. We have clear instructions from God when and how to keep the Sabbath in the beginning of the book. And in the back of the book, we have a clear example of how we can be doing that. Now, again, this doesn't ever mean that something won't pop up on Sabbath, forcing you to break it. But if it's in your power and you can keep it, I think you should keep it when and how God asked. You can also worship him on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. As believers, again, we should be making the point to have daily worship, daily time in the Bible, daily meditation on the word of God and the words of Jesus. But the Sabbath specifically is set apart and holy to the Most High, and he asked us to keep it a certain way if we love him. And Jesus showed us that he did do that and how he did that. There's an apocryphal writing called the Book of Nazarene. Now, this work supposedly contains additional words and parables of Jesus. Now, I'm not going to argue its validity with you. It may or may not be scripture, but there was something very interesting in it that I wanted to share with you. Jesus supposedly comes across two musicians and he's asking them about their instruments. It was a stringed instrument. And Jesus says, how do you tune that? Then the guy he's talking to goes into detail about how to tune the stringed instrument. And Jesus basically says the kingdom of God is like this instrument and tuning it. If you make the strings too tight, it'll break and render the instrument worthless. But on the flip side, if the string is too loose, then you won't get any sound out of it. Jesus says that the kingdom of God must be in perfect harmony, not too tight, but not too loose. And that's the same thing with the laws of God. We can't be so tight, so strict, that we won't give anyone any leeway or grace. We all make mistakes and occasionally stuff pops up. But we also can't be too loose, too lax on the rules. For lack of a better term, we can't be so willy-nilly with them that we just completely disregard them either. This can be said of all of God's laws. Should you keep the Sabbath? Yeah, absolutely. Do it when and how God asked. But some people get way too uptight with it. Making up laws that aren't even in the Bible. And telling people that if you don't do all these laws that we made up, you're breaking the Sabbath and you're going to hell. We also can't be so loose with the rules that we start telling people that the Sabbath doesn't matter, that you don't even need to keep it. If we stop correcting bad behavior and stop letting people know that they're breaking the word of God and going against what the Bible tells us to do, then we're too loose with the rules. But if we're so strict with the rules that we stop showing grace or mercy or love, we're too tight with them. There's a fine balance we must walk as believers, and our lives need to be in tune with the Word of God. Not too tight, but not too loose either. And that all starts with letting people know what the Bible actually says to do. Like when and how to keep the Sabbath. For those of you that have made it to the end of this video with me, I pray that God blesses you and opens your eyes to the truth of his word and the beauty of walking in his commandments. May Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Most High God, be with all of you always.